Hello, my name is Connie Lee, and I'm the president and the founder of the FOXA Foundation, which stands for Family and Friends Fighting Against Child Sexual Assault. And I'm here to share my story for the Shattering the Silence of Sexual Assault uh, story ex exposés. My story began whenever I was a child. <clears throat> my dad left my mom with five kids to care for herself. Um, we lived out in the country, in, we lived in Louisiana, and we lived out in the country, and mostly um, my mom worked and we rarely, rarely ever saw her. Uh, there wasn't a lot of food at the house. A lot of times we didn't have utilities. Um, we were shuffled back and forth between family and neighbors and wherever. Um, and wasn't always the best environment of places to be. Um, I remember when I was eight, my mom remarried. Well, she married again. She married the, her my step first stepfather. Some of my brothers really liked him, but I re I didn't like him. My sister didn't like him, and he beat on my mom. One day he came in drunk, and he tried to kill my mom. He was going to try to take her across the state line and kill her. His name was Virgil Willis. Uh, the police came and they surrounded the house. Uh, they told mom to come out. Told him to come out with mom because uh, he was going to try to carry her across the state line and kill her. So they got her and got her out in the drive and they got him out in the drive with her. And so when they did, um, the police shot him dead. And I'm telling you this to prelude on to the other. Um, whenever the police shot him, you know, she went, oh, like she'd been shot. And so we all jumped up and we ran out because it had been like an all afternoon ordeal. So and he was he had been shooting out of the house. The cops wouldn't shoot in, but he'd been shooting out of the house all afternoon. So we all jumped up and ran out because we thought my mom had been shot, but she wasn't. So um, it wasn't a year later. Um, mom remarried, and this guy made that guy look like a saint. I promise you. But I remember whenever, even at eight years old. I, I would pray every night that God would take him out of our life. You know, I would read a chapter of the Bible and be on my knees at eight years old praying for God to take him out of our life. And I think that's where, that was the beginning of my, you know, my faith in God and my, and my spiritual walk and my, you know, my faith. Just to, to know that everything's going to be okay regardless of what we go through. So, about a year later, she remarried this guy named, um, James McGuffey, and he was from a town not too far from where we grew up at. So we still lived in the country at that time. And so she married him, um, and he would beat her on a daily basis. He would beat her with his fist. He'd beat her with his hands. We'd come in from school. She'd be she'd have bruises all over from her face to her hands to her legs or ribs. He beat her in the head with a gun stock, he'd beat her with his fist, and so we never knew what to expect when we came in from school. So uh, one day, he liked to go to, on Sunday, they would go to his mom's to watch wrestling, and I hated wrestling because then he'd like to come home and try the moves out on my mother, and I still, I'm not a wrestling fan to this day, so, um, but that particular day, I was I didn't feel well, so I wanted to stay home. And we lived in this little bitty trailer, and the windows were really small, so you couldn't get out of them. And so I thought maybe Mom would stay home, and he would go on to his family's. But he didn't. He sent Mom over there with the rest of the family, and he stayed there with me. And so, and I could before the car was even backing out of the drive, you could hear all the doors locking. So I went in my room and I shut the door and I locked it. And so I heard him come to the door and he said, if you don't open this door, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill you, your mother too. You better open this door. And so, and I was huddled on the corner and I, I didn't open the door for a while. And then he kept pounding on it. He was, he was, he was serious. <clears throat> so I finally opened the door and he took his uncircumcised penis out and he raped me. And it's just, it's true what they say when they say that um, you kind of disassociate from your body. I was 11 years old. And so you're you kind of disassociate and you're just watching and you kind of just gaze out. And when he gets when he got through, he said, "Now don't you feel better?" And it's like, well, no, I really didn't feel better. I felt like the, the lowest rock I could have crawled under wouldn't have been low enough. I remember, excuse me. I remember crawling into the corner of the bedroom. 
and I stayed there for hours. And I felt so dirty and ashamed. I wonder what did I, what did I do to cause this? Was it something I wear or wore? Was it something I did? Was it something I said? What did I do? So, and then you're, you know, you can't tell because you're going to lose your family. Because he may kill your mother, he may kill your siblings, he may kill you. And many survivors go through the same thing. So, and about a week later, he threw my brother up against the wall. And he said, if y'all don't like it, y'all can leave. So we packed up what little bit we could grab in our, hand, in our hands. And we walked about maybe two, three blocks to our dad's house. And our dad was an alcoholic. And we lived with an abusive stepmother, verbally abusive, mentally abusive. And, and our dad was physically abusive. So um, I remember walking back, looking back down the road, wondering why would my mother choose him over us? Why? And I finally realized many, many years later, you can't expect healthy parents, unhealthy parents, to make healthy decisions. They're just not going to, they just can't do it. They just don't have it in them. And it took me a lot to, to grapple with that. So, at some point in your life, you have to pick yourself up. You have to know, you know, you're a child of God. And that's the best father and parent you can have. You gotta know that you're worth more than that, that you're loved, and you deserve more than that. And you're better than that. And you can do more than that. So despite what the family that you have been born with say about you or make up lies about you or say, you know, things that happen and then they say that didn't happen or whatever, don't let a little take away your truth because that's your truth and that's your story. And just because they don't want to believe it happened or they don't want you to talk about what's happened, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. It won't erase the truth. So you stand by your truth and you stand by your story. And together we're going to break the sh silence. We're going to shatter this silence. This is a, this is a multi-generational epidemic. And it's, or I believe it's our last and it's our greatest frontier that we fought, we were fighting still. It's been, we've been fighting this since the dawn of man. And it's in human nature, and I don't think we'll ever eradicate it. But by God, we're going to fight it with everything we've got. And we're going to make a better, safer environment for the children to come. We're going to give them the tools and the resources so they can have safer environments. We're going to have better mental health resources on every community. And so that's what we're fighting for, and that's what we're doing this for. And so I want you to join us, please. Share your story, help us fight, and join the Foxhill Foundation Revolution. And I thank you for listening, and please post your story and join us. Thank you very much. Bye.